Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Well, I'm really excited today because uh, uh, I've got my new telescope. Um, I did a pre-order back in December. Now, admittedly, this did arrive uh, a few days ago, but I've been waiting to retrieve some stuff back uh, from up north, which I've now got, and now I get a chance to um, set it all up and hopefully doing some imaging if the sky is clear. The scope is the Ascar 65 PHQ. Uh, now it comes in double box, I can get into it. Uh, we have this, these little adapters usually have, uh, do have a little um, plastic bag around them. So the first thing is a female M68 to male M54 adapter. Uh, I've got a, a female M54 to female M54 extension ring. And this is a, I think a male M54 to female uh, M4, uh, to, sorry, to male M48. Um, and then inside here is a place to put a filter, is my understanding. And uh, let's get rid of that. And here is the telescope. So I've taken all the plastic off. It does come wrapped in plastic, but you know, you don't want to watch me take the plastic off. So um, look, the first thing when I look at it, I mean, it looks great. Nice finish. Uh, this is the green, black and uh, white version. There is one with pink accents on it. Uh, and some of you may have seen uh, James from DSO Imager show his one a few weeks ago. He managed to get the, the pink one earlier. I'm also pleased to see that it has a uh, decent sized dovetail plate on it. Now some telescopes come with a little squiddy thing like this and you know you, once you add your filter wheel and your focuser and um, camera you end up not being able to balance it. So they've, I'm really pleased to see they've put a decent length one on here, which means you've got plenty of room for, for balancing. The one thing I wish they had put on instead of just this handle type thing, which is handy for carrying around, but I do wish they'd put on something more like this, where you could attach your um, guide scope. Um, otherwise you are uh, either gonna have to get another uh, accessory to, to replace this or um, use the little side adapter here. It's just nice to have it on top, your guide scope just for balance and everything, but um, we'll have to work with that. Now this is a quintuplet design, so five elements in it. It's got two elements of ED glass. Um, it has a oh, 65 millimeter um, aperture, hence the 65 in the name, 65 PHQ. It has a focal length of 416 millimeters and it's f6.4. Now you can get a focal reducer, a 0.75 focal reducer for it. That brings it down to, my understanding is a 312 millimeter focal length, and I think it's f4.8 then. Um, I'll double check, if I've got that wrong, the correct one will appear on the screen somewhere above my head. Um, it, it certainly um, feels nice. And um, the, well, the other thing I should point out is, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh, I thought this had markings on it for um, doing, uh, adjusting um, rotation, basically. Uh, that does appear, if I just show you here, just hold it like this. Once you bring the focuser out, then it sort of reveals all the markings here. So that's great. So what you can do is you've got this little knob on top here, and uh, you can rotate, and you can see what sort of angle you're on, which is helpful when you're, um, you know, changing rotation of your um, camera and you want to bring it back to a previous rotation if you like. The other thing that's quite nice too with the um, dew shield is that it it's quite firm which is good actually. You do have, um, you can lock it on the top here which is good and it won't move. Uh, but it's, it, it's nice because my Skywatcher, um, I don't know what the story was with the design on those ones but anyway they um, Dew shield is really loose and floppy, and even though it's got two screws for um, sort of trying to hold it in place, as soon as you go up towards um, azimuth, it just slides back, and I've ended up putting Velcro behind it to try and stop it from sliding back. But this feels like it's not going to budge once it um, points upwards because it's pretty firm in the first place, and then you can just sort of make it totally secure with the... Um, with the, the nut, the locking nut on the top here. So um, yeah, my next job then is to uh, attach the camera and the filter wheel and my ZWO electronic f um, focuser and uh, then see if I can get a night's imaging.
Right, I'm all set up for tonight. Um, I'm hoping it'll be clear till about midnight. We'll see how we go. I have had a bit of a go with this already, um, which you've probably seen earlier in the in this video. Um, unfortunately, I've been having a lot of disconnections between the ASI Air and the mount, and it seems the only way to solve it is to restart the ASI Air. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, I might try, you know, replacing the um, cable that goes between the mount and the ASI Air, um, but it's just odd that the only way to fix it is to actually restart the ASI Air and not restarting the mount. Um, so at the moment, the ASI Air has been relegated to uh, duties of just distributing power, so uh, basically like a Pegasus power box advance, if you like, um, to all the different parts, different um, components, and I'm back to using my Intel NUC um, through Nina. So um, hopefully I can continue on imaging tonight, my target. Uh, I would like to get to the bottom of this though, because this is a really good piece of kit and um, I'd like to be able to use it particularly if I'm more mobile or sort of heading up north, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll see how we get on. Now, um, this is a quintuplet design, as I've mentioned earlier, so it's got a field flattener already in there so I don't have to worry about that and the design is also such that um, you don't have to do any um, mucking around with back focus. So I've just used all the adapters here that came with the telescope and then I've got a ZWO 16.5 millimeter uh, adapter to connect to the filter wheel and um, yeah, it's just a matter of putting it all in the back and getting it in focus and away you go. So. The back focus thing can be a headache and that's what I like about this telescope because you don't have to worry about it. Now I've got the filter here, filter wheel here with the um, Optolong 7 nanometer filters and I've got the ASI 1600mm Pro on the back. Um, this is just a um, QHY 130mm uh, guide scope and that's the ASI uh, 120 um, mini on there. Now the only other thing that I've done on this telescope is I have put some um, risers in here. Uh, the reason being is that if I can show you down here, the ZWO um, focuser was actually catching on the mount and um, that was causing issues so I had to actually um, raise the whole telescope up. Fortunately I already had these so um, that was very useful. So uh, yeah, tonight hoping to get some some clear sky and a bit of imaging time. Okay, so I had captured some video of me um, collecting the data through Nina, etc., but it didn't record very well, so we're just throwing that away. Um, I just wanted to show you, this was a sort of a quick imaging session, if you like. It, it's nowhere near the amount of time that I'd like to spend on this area, but I just wanted to get a, a bit of imaging done um, while the moon was up, and then uh, now that the moon is is not up um, in the in the sky. Um, I'm imaging a dark nebula with the ASCAR, but um, just as a first light, I thought it wasn't a bad uh, run at it. So this is what I captured with the HA. I captured a lot more HA than the O3. I, I really wanted to capture equal amounts, but there was a, a quite a, um, a full moon up, so I just sort of kept capturing HA while the um, skies were clear. Um, it's only about, I think it was about five and a half hours or something of HA, but um, you can see here there's some nice nebulosity picked up, picked up and this is the uh, part of the pencil nebula there. 
uh, the O3, there, there's a lot more to be to be um, picked up of this sort of type of nebulosity around here and through here. But again, this is only about two and a half hours, so um, not a lot of time. And uh, again, you can see the pencil nebula. Actually, there's a bit more O3 in this area than there is in the HA. So again, would have been better to spend more time on the on the O3. But it is what it is when the moon is up. The S2 didn't really um, contribute a heck of a lot. Um, here you can see there's a bit of the pencil here. There's a little bit of nebulosity around here, but largely there's not a lot to be shown um, with the S2. So I kind of ended up just processing an HOO, uh, to be honest. Um, and this is the final image that I've come up with. Uh, so not bad for a first light. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And, and maybe once I've finished doing this dark nebula, I'll go back and actually collect, capture a lot more data on this and try and pick up a lot more of the O3, which there certainly is more O3 um, to be to be picked up in this area. So um, it's not too bad. So the other thing is, um, you know, how are the stars are out in the corners? So although I've got this here labeled as O3, this is actually luminance. Um, what happened is I had been mucking around with the, the camera uh, before I started imaging and I disconnected the camera and uh, then reconnected it. But because the filter wheel was also going through the USB hub of the camera, when I disconnected it, it had also disconnected the filter wheel and I forgot to tell it to reconnect to the filter wheel. So when I set off imaging, um, the telescope went and did it slew and center and it did a focusing with the luminance filter, which was it was on already. And then when it went to try and switch to the O3 filter, it couldn't change. So it went ahead and started imaging um, and labeled it as O3, but it was actually the luminance filter. And I realized that after I, I think I was watching TV and not really taking too much notice of what was going on with my imaging rig, which I, uh, a big mistake. Um, I noticed down the corner it said um, couldn't move to filter position, so I, I managed to correct that in the end. But here's a nice frame anyway, a five minute sub um, to look at what's happening in the corners with the stars because I, you know, really want to make sure I've got nice round stars out in the corners. If we just move into the center here, you can see nice and round. Um, that's good. Let's just move up into this top corner up here and they're nice round stars. So really happy with that. We'll just move over to this other corner and again they're nice and round. Uh, I'll come down to this corner and still nice round stars. The only thing I did notice over here with is related to some tilt or whatever, I'm not sure. I mean they're pretty damn close to round stars but there is a tiny bit of elongation in the corners here but you know that didn't seem to affect anything um, particularly once I was had stacked them all so um, and just a little bit away from the corner here you know they're, they're nice and round so um, yeah from what I can see at the moment you know it, there are good stars right to the corners so I'm really pleased about that this is obviously with the 1600 um, it'll be good to um, test it with the 2600 uh, because it'll have a bit of a wider field of view and again see what the, the stars are like but at the moment um, yeah, really happy with the results um, and uh, yeah, happy with the first light of this um, with the relatively limited amount of time. Yes, it was about eight, I think eight and a half hours in total or something like that, but most of it is HA and I should have had a lot more O3. So um, yeah. Okay, well it's about time I wrapped up this video. Um, this is by no means a review of this telescope. It's really just uh, sort of setting it up in a first light. But from what I'm seeing so far, uh, I'm really pleased with this telescope. It's uh, picking up some nice detail. It's got nice stars out to the corners, which I find really important. And I also love the fact that you don't have to worry about your backspacing. You know, you just get your connections, uh, get it in focus, and away you go. None of this diving through your box of your adapters to try and find your with, you know, within that half a millimeter of what's required, etc. So that that's great. Um, uh, I obviously would have liked to have spent more time on the target, but I think now that the moon's gone, I'm going to move on to a dark nebula and uh, try that out. So at some stage in the future, I will get a sort of a more a review of the telescope about the things I like and don't, don't like, but uh, I think I need to spend a bit more time um, using it. Um, so yeah, look, uh, thank you for uh, sticking with the video if you've got this far. 
And um, until next time, I hope everybody's getting lots and lots of clear skies.